What's up, TIW Mafia? JP here with Big Joe. I think we're going to have a guest joining us in a little while. Um, my buddy Brandon Langley, um, Brandino Davis, for those on the New England indie scene. Um, Brandon's got some, um, he's got a, a benefit coming up for himself because he's got some medical bills. He's got some uh, liver issues and it's, um, Brandon's a great kid and he's a young guy and this is really important to me. Um, so whether you're able to attend the benefit or not, like if anyone can donate, I know I've already shared the link. It's greatly appreciated. Brandon's got, um, I don't know how old he is. He's in his thirties. Um. But his rookie year, I got to live out my dream of getting in a wrestling ring in, um, for UFO Wrestling at one of their um, their Halloween shows. The I forget what they call it, but uh, Battle Royal. And it was all a spot with Brandon, that it, me and him. So we go back quite a ways. And uh, I got to sit with him recently at a show and just, me and him shoot the shit the whole show. Great kid. Um, and again, I'll put the link for the, the donations in the, the description. Um, another thing is, it looks like coming in January, we're going to switch nights and times by a little bit. Um, we're going to have, we're going to change basically like. Everything you see now will be different. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really going to kind of. Um, I think revolution revolutionize revolution the way yes the way podcasts on our level do things like where so I have a very nice microphone I have some decent equipment so you see my camera flickering that's how good that is that's the best part about the show so uh, far is that split second we don't have to look at your mic so we're going to um it, it, everything is going to be different everything's going to be completely upgraded and um. We're going to go Tuesday nights, I believe, uh, either 6.30 or 7.45, uh, something like that. And um, when you guys see what we got, yeah, Based, it's going to be crazy. Correct me if I'm wrong in saying this, JP, that, but there's only three things that will be the same about the show, and that's our two faces and the banner behind you. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And um, It's a step it's up. Gonna, it's it's going to bring a level up. up. You know, and um, so it, it's really cool, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've been excited about this for literally since before COVID. Um, yeah. is how long this has been in the works. Now, uh, what's up, hey. Bobby D? Hey, and JP, before we get going, um, more into talking to Bobby, hey, Bobby, but before we go more, I want to um, send a big thank you out for helping out with the uh, Brandon's fundraiser. We, he's having uh, oh. I have a package being delivered yes. to him from Death Wish Coffee. Right. So I'd like to send a huge call for the raffle. I'd love to send out a, a huge thank you to Death Wish Coffee and more specifically, uh, Jeff Ayers. Hey, here's What's Brandon. Up? What's going on, Brandito? I was just uh, I was just giving the listeners a little um, little bit of our history, like me and you being in the uh, being in the Turkey Rumble. I don't know. Oh, if last year? That, oh, when, you, I when I first you started? My when I first no, started? no, no, no. Your rookie year, you gave me my opportunity yeah, to live out my dream of getting into the wrestling room. And I, I threw some was really good shots, Selby, didn't right? I? Was it in Selby, yes. right? I, yep, I chopped the shit out of your throat because I didn't know what I was doing. But yeah, you took well, really well. One, one, one and done deal. <laughs> yeah, you took good care of me, though, because... Um, I wanted you, if you remember, I was trying to get you to hockey fight me. I'm a big guy. I was trying to get you to pull my shirt over my over my head, and you wouldn't do it. There were children there, probably. You can't scare <laughs> kids like that. But it oh, was yeah. Cute. It was in the Southie, like, Boys and Girls Club. So let's just pick the two tallest <laughs> people. It was the old pal, Joe. It was the pal. The Joe, old pal? The old okay. Pal. So, That's old yeah. school. <laughs> yeah. But that was like, but I was giving them a little rundown. Like, can you tell them, like, your, your benefit you got coming up? I'm going to put the link in the um, bio once the show gets posted probably tomorrow. Yep. Can you tell them a little bit of what's going on with you? And, um... So, what's going on with me? I have a stage five kidney failure um, due to hypertension. 
Um, it wasn't because of like my lack of diet or like my oh. abuse of my body. It was just hereditary because most African Americans and Spanish people are easily to get hypertension, and that's the easier cause for kidney failure. That's and this is like um. I mean, I've sat, me and you sat down at the last UFO show, and me, you, and uh, Reaper Steve Beck sat there the whole show just shooting the shit. Like, it's, this means a lot to me to be able to, if I can help you out in any little way with this, you know what I mean? In the medical. The wrestling community has been ups and bounds of being supportive with the situation. Like, can you give people an idea of what your medical bills out of pocket are? Um, the. Medication that I'm going to have after the transplant is probably going to cost me around like $500 with insurance. Uh, I don't have any uh, income right now because I work as a substitute teacher at Chelsea High. Um, and a hell of a football coach, too. Could even go, could even do that, and that killed me the most. It was my first, like, all four-year, like, senior from freshman right. to so- freshman, so it kind of sucked. Um. Bills, electricity, help my mama because I was using my using the money to help my mama because she has cancer. So we're, we've been kind of struggling, but been okay with it at the same time. Yeah. And you're a pretty happy go lucky guy. Like every time I've, every yeah, time I've talked you got, to you, you got to be happy go lucky when it comes yeah. like this. You can't be negative, Nancy. Right. You can't be worry about what's going to happen. I mean, even when the doctors told me I have over a hundred donors they, wow. and, and they, it is like, in the years I've worked, he worked there. That never happens. People barely could have one. So you if you had a hundred donors, donors? A I'm hundred sorry, did, donors. did I hear that right? A hundred, a hundred donors. That's wow. amazing. Yeah. Yes. And my goal is since when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I will, I, I kind of want to be the spokesperson uh, for the Kitty Foundation. So, just so people could say, hey, he was a wrestler. He had kidney disease. He had a transplant. He had to deal with it for like a, the, the healing process, and he's back in the ring. Um, just because uh, there's 100 donors doesn't mean there's not all mm-hmm. matches, but there's some matches for right. other, every other person. So, I want to ask everyone who donated. Still be in a donation thing because that's someone's son, someone's mother, father that needs a kidney. And I have to say, having like a loss of function of your kidneys is a lot to take toes. I think once a week I get deathly ill. Like I have a flu. Wow. No. I mean, I, I and also, it. you had to stop wrestling, which was something you love too. I, it, and, it, it kills me. Yeah, I know what that does. I sat with you at a show and watched you at a show, and I know that it does. It's probably, you probably had the same antsiness as JP does at a buffet yeah. before they say it's time <laughs> to eat. Because you worked, you wrestled pretty much between NCW and UFO. I know you did a ton up in Maine. You worked pretty much every weekend. Yeah, I did a bunch of shows for, uh, like you know, what to wrestle, Vacation Pro, you know. Yeah, you were like one of Tony Atlas's original guys. You were, <laughs> you've been with Tony Atlas since like your day one, right? Yeah, I first met him day, uh, when I first traveled uh, going towards me. That's and he like ever since. So when me and him have to do shows together, I would pick him up or Larry would pick him up. And we'll just, no. just, just, yeah. Now just, yeah. we we're gonna talk more about the kidney stuff later on, but I want to definitely talk about like your wrestling and. Like yeah. where you trained and how you got into it, and uh, I've been I got into it. Uh, my first match ever was the Mass Transit, and I fell in love what? with it. But I, yeah, it so that was transit. wow. Okay, I so was, the old I was seven years old. That's great. That's you know, that was the first ECW match Rich Palladino called. Yeah, he told me that. He said, really? I'm like, yeah. I, 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 it was, um, he, I think he wrestled, um, not wrestled, he repped, um It wasn't the Blue Jack match. It was another match. It was ball, It was the Mah- one of the Mahoney's, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I was six years old, and I saw wow. you know Jack slicing that kid who thought he was 21. Oh, Jesus. That's yeah. a, hell of a hell of a match to be there to cut your teeth on. Yeah. 
Uh, I after college, I did, but then after college, when I thought I did the full football thing, I was looking around for my Jose Perez, who I used to, I used to go to school out in Worcester. Okay. And uh, Rhode Island, right there. Like yeah. Yeah. So after I was doing that for a little bit, then after I graduated college and was going back home, and he was telling me about Jason Rumble at the Bell Time Club in um, Everett. And yeah. the one who trained me was him, DC Dillinger, Mike McCarthy, and then Bo Douglas after Look. when he took over. That's and, a hell of a list of trainers. Like Dave is yeah. one of the like I, I I always got along with DC from like my time with NECW and Yeah, I was I was um, lucky that he, he, he liked me from the jump and he, um I was, he had a he had a hand in a few students and the ones that he helped he genuinely, I can tell you this, and I know he helped you a lot. He uh, genuinely loved every one of you guys. He, I, I know you all knew it because you all got the head hug. I did. I, I got the, <laughs> I had the, welcome to my home. Here's Joey and Chachi. I'm a Bills fan. Take the Bills. I'll punch you in your goddamn face. And I'm like, oh, I'm yep. Um, but then I started wrestling for like almost nine, nine years. I didn't take two years off because I got in two car accidents back to back. But and you still mom, trained. That's... You still trained through a lot of the car. Like I remember when you took a little bit of time off, you didn't miss a whole lot of training. Uh, you yeah, were still going up to uh, bell time. That's because I had like three herniated discs in my neck. Yeah. So I was like, I had to do that. That's... And that, I mean, that's. That bell time when that was behind ever when that was in Everett um, behind the store there, like it was Seven Eleven, it was Ferry Street. Yes, that um, I mean you had girl, you had at the time Sasha Banks would go in there for open ring and stuff like that. Like you got in there with some real people in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and it, and it kind of kills me when I had the Kenny thing because I was actually going and I was going a lot of more places. Then this happened, so I had to, like, it was like a step back, yeah. but. Once I get this KD and I'm playing to wrestle, I am going ham. I, I'm personally going to be offended if you do it a day before it's too soon. No, no, no. no. As much as I want to see the jack of all trades get back in the ring, I want to see you do it the right way. Absolutely. I'm doing, I have to do it the right way, man. I have to. That's and and it's a it's a lot of work. It's a lot of um. It's kind of like a wake up call being a, like a young man. I'm, I'm only 34. I just yeah. turned like 34 in March. And having dialysis, I'm the youngest one there. That's... I'm there three times a week, four hours a day. And I'm in a, and I'm in a, and I'm in a machine. Like I, I can show right. you the, I can show you the, the, the tube right here. So it's oh, right wow. here. It goes from like my neck all the way here. The tubes just right around here. So they put like it's like an oil change. Okay. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's uh when I saw it because I mean me and you, I consider you someone I'm friends with, someone I'll sit with at a wrestling yeah, yeah, show. Yeah. I don't talk to you much between wrestling shows. So when I ever saw that on Facebook, it was you know, the first thing I did was reach out to you. Like it was like uh it was shocking though, you know what I mean? And but to see the amount of love you got from that just shows you how New England wrestling community is. Yeah. The wrestling and, community and in general. I surprised but. a bunch of people that was going to be supportive of me. We got um, people We got people listening live. I don't know if you know uh, Bobby D. Uh, he goes to the UFO shows. Um, oh, yeah. yeah the guy know. with the Hogan mustache. He said he's going to be at the event. His wife's Laurie here. I'm assuming she'll be with him. Yep, yep. Um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited and static and stuff like I, that. I don't think I can make the event, but I'm gonna I'm gonna Venmo this week and send you a couple of bucks for a ticket. Or That's fine. Or, um, I have and, a, a GoFundMe. Um, there's a yeah. bunch of there's a GoFundMe. My mom has a Cash App. I have a Cash App on. Uh, you can just send if you want to. You can send yeah. to me on Facebook. Make it a lot easier. Okay. Um, and I this. and everything else is. Post it if you have it if you have it already. Yes, yeah, I got the links, and I would, like I said, I'll have them right in the show notes. Um, and this goes out on like wrestlingnewsource.com, which gets I don't even know how many views a week. So worldwide, thousands, yeah. and thousands, and thousands. Well, so, if I have to be the spokesperson for kidney uh, kidney awareness, then I'll be that dude. 
Well, if I have Absolutely. hypertension myself, you know what I mean? Turn and I, I got it taken care of because I thought I was having a stroke one day. Like, honest to God, I wound up yeah, in the that's ER. How that's how yeah. it feels. You're like, you're hot you all the time. You're out of breath. Yeah. You don't know why you're out of breath. Then when you have hypertension, you're like, oh, that's why. But yeah. mine was severe. Mine was mine was like I was taking care of it, but it was so severe. It was already doing that. Yeah. And, Brandino, I know this is our first meeting. Yep. Uh, and I can already tell you I, I like you. Uh, <laughs> GP <laughs> speaks very right. highly of you. I've known GP since I was bullying him when we were kids. Yeah. And <laughs> if, he, if he loves you, I love you. And uh, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Love it. I love every single one of the wrestling uh, communities and the supporters that – Like I fun. said, like – if you weren't there, I, Pat was trying to put me in UFO because I Pat put me in that match because I grew up in Celtic. But I don't think if you were there as like the rookie being in there, I don't think I had that spot, and I don't think I got that chance to live out. That well, we both, had, we both had dreams come true. That's yeah. it, and that that crowd went crazy for us because they all knew me. That me and you, well, me and you, when they called you in the ring and then me right after that, the crowd went. And then when I chased, I, well, I was supposed to chase you all. I don't move that quick. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no it's a better world. And I'm glad that your your family saw you and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it was cool. And I, like, that's something I'll never forget. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can, I get in the ring and I can hear Jose Perez going, Ooh, JP's in here. Luckily, Jose never found me in the ring. <laughs> because I'm sure my chest would have been sore as hell. Yeah. Um, when, they, when they got me, though, I was like, oh. <laughs> it's like, welcome but, to the business. I was like, cool. He's like a shark. He just see you when, you when you're vulnerable and take a bite. Yeah. Now, like Jaws. Can you tell, <laughs> like, I mean, you've had, you've wrestled some of the names. I know when you go to Maine, like, you're one of the ones they put in there if they bring somebody in. Yeah. Um, can you uh, a few people, I mean, but my, my, my most prized ones has to be uh, working for uh, Limitless and uh, Big Time, but especially at the Delta oh, Club, yeah. the place that raised me. Yeah. I had plenty of opportunities there. Shout out to them. Without yeah, them, yeah. I wouldn't be around. I wouldn't be Brandy Dino Davis um, and the Mac Daddy of all trades. That's, that's it. I've become I've become so close with Bo over the years. It's incredible. Like, I'll... I'll I'll send people to the Bell Time Club whenever they're telling me they're in this area and they want to learn the trade. And it's and, it, and, it, and it's a lot. It's a and it's a lot to, to learn. And a lot yeah. of people don't realize that. Oh, I'm mm. so used to have to learn it because I play college football and our books were our place. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when you have a learning disability and you have to learn stuff like the correct way, you have to find niche. And right. That's what I thought. No, and you've definitely overcome that. You know what I mean, and that's yeah. Now, where did you go to? Where did you play college? Uh, Becker College in Worcester. Okay. Uh, defensive end and linebacker. And you had that. Obviously, you had that dream of going pro there, and then turn to wrestling. Yeah, what happened was it was kind of a blessing. Actually, um, I was working at the Palladium, and one of my friends, uh, Tony Spencer, oh yeah, was up there. And ICP had a show, but they oh, usually do a wrestling. But they usually do a wrestling show in the middle of like yeah. the two days. So Butterbean was there, and Joey Eastman's like, "You want to make seven hundred dollars?" I'm like, "Doing what?" He's like, <laughs> "You getting punched by uh, Butterbean?" I'm like, "No, nah, I'm good." And <laughs> I was not getting punched by Butterbean. No, like, oh. it's like getting hit by a bus. Yeah, I'm it's like. I, I'm like, all right, you know, lose lose two for a couple a couple grand. Yeah, so add, add another zero on there. <laughs> but, that, it's like, oh boy. No, yeah, butterbean. No, no, no. That's, if you give me a give me a big worker, sure. Yeah. But butterbean was a straight up fighter. Yeah. He's a barrel <laughs> brawler. That's. Oh, I remember. Oh, <laughs> I remember that day. <laughs> now, were you in? Because you, I mean, but you've been a bouncer. Like bouncing was like because I can remember bumping into you in Salem one time. I was up yeah, there for I Halloween and my, bouncing. My twenties and stuff, and I got I just got old with it. I was like, okay, yeah. oh yeah, see so, people, see same like dudes. I think they can fight, but they're drunk, <laughs> and you're like, all right, 
Then you're home at like two thirty three, and you're going to yeah. bed by like six. And you're like, all right, I'm good. That's a tough I'm happy business. having a, having, a, having an eight to three job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially like you know you're teaching now, so you you know. Yeah. Oh, you were, and that's um. <laughs> are you able to teach still? Is that so? Or is that did that happen? Yet? Because I, it's a bit. It's a Chelsea's a huge school. That's, yeah. I have to go from like like classroom to classroom, and then from like oh. one floor to like the fourth yeah. floor, and then like you have to go down the second floor to go to right. the last set of four floors. It's fun stuff. Let me tell you. Right. So you basically. You, you not only got hit with, you know, the biggest shock of your life health wise, but you lost all of your means of making any type of money. Yeah. So that's, that's why. That's why, better. guys, this is so fucking important. Like, seriously. I don't care if you guys can donate. If you guys, first of all, if you can't afford to donate anything, then please don't. But if you can afford to donate a dollar, it could make a difference if you know a thousand people could. donated a dollar. That's a thousand dollars. Or I thought I could ask from all the fans, be donors. Yeah, oh. I'm on the list. That's just be donors. It's not that hard. Um, you, everybody will be taken care of. Um, with my donor, with my situation, since I have good health insurance and I have a, and I have a more health insurance coming because I have a situation, it's already paid for. So, um, and there's already right incomes for people who are having like the donors. They'll do like funds for like the kidney foundation and stuff like that, and short term disability because you're gonna be out for like three weeks, three to six weeks after and, the surgery. Yeah, Thanks. and I'll talk to you more later offline because I don't want to make this about me. But I've had my own share of medical issues, like JP can attest to. Uh, I had a pituitary tumor, and I'm still dealing with the effects. Almost, almost 20 years later, you know, so it's, it's, you know, I have a lot of insight on the recovery and things like that, that I could probably shed a little light on you for, I mean, it's not, liver is different than, you know, but recovery is recovery. And yeah, I'm, just, man. I'm just another ear you can go on. And if, if you need me, I'm here. Uh, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Cause it's a lot. Of, it's, oh. a, it's a, it's a lot to bear. Yeah. And, oh yeah. It took me a while to tell people uh, because how, I'm very – go ahead. How long did you know before you actually, like, opened up about it? Like four months. Man, it's and that's a lot. To yourself, it's tough to make yourself that vulnerable. Yeah, so, but it's – so, and it's one of those things where I'm sure it's extremely hard to talk about, but I'm also sure that you dealing with that on your own was extremely hard in its own way as well. You know it, what I mean? It was, and, uh, and and it was just like, who can I talk to? But I don't like talking to my talking to other people, so That's... it was like a catch twenty two. Now your wrestling career, like who can you tell us? Like what what what's been your biggest match? What's been the most important match in your career to you? Working all my trainers. Okay. The one, the one person I wish I actually no, I did work. Um, my my main one was winning uh, the Let's Wrestle first ever Let's Wrestle Tag Champions with uh, yeah. Eric Johnson and being nope. in uh, being in uh, big time and stuff like that and traveling. Now, did you take any type of heat working like the Let's Wrestle and working for like Tony Atlas up in Maine? Was there no. any type of tension with that? Because you don't, you didn't see a lot of people working for both of the companies. You know what I mean? And I know Tony no, Atlas no. is sort of old. School. No, it was, it, it, it wasn't no heat. I'm not, I, I'm not a fan of like being in the middle of heat. Right. Uh, I'm a business person. I mean, if you, if you, if it doesn't combine from both situations, then I can work. It. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, is it hard? Yeah. Um, do I want to travel again? Absolutely. I want to go travel again. But Yeah, I mean, you did, like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you used to take the trips to Canada with the Bell Time guys, right? Canada, so in... uh, uh, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, yep. uh, like, I've driven everywhere. Yeah, that's the, the, like, so certain companies in New England, just to explain to people, like, they have relationships, like uh, Bell Time Club with Jason Rumble. And Jason Rumble now lives up in what is he in Maine? 
or I know he's right on the on the border. Of, and they had a they had a relationship with a couple of Canadian companies. So if you were working for the Bell Time Club and you didn't have warrants and could get past the border, you had a shot at going on these Canadian tours with them, which would last. Some of them lasted like a week or more. Working for. Um, I'm assuming it was big time where you went down to North Carolina because I know they do a lot of shows down that way. Yep. It and, was, North, um... and Bell Time, uh, sorry, Bell Time's a great company. But uh, big time is, I mean, they tend to bring in a lot of big names and they tend to draw a lot of people at their show. So, yeah. And, and to come off that, what he was, JP was saying, now I'm going to ask you a little different line that we ask, I ask a lot of people. And I'm going to take out the top top names out of WWE and AEW right now. But who's the top guy in the indies that you would like to face? I want to work Alec Price again, and I want to work for Bison. Now, have you worked a lot? Because Alec is, a, you know, obviously he's one of Bose. He's one of the Bell Time students. Have you had a chance to work with him a lot? I worked for them a couple of times. And me and him just beat the hell out of each other, but we loved it at the same time. Yeah, he's um, a... um, and I'm extremely proud of him because he's a limitless champion. You know what I mean? Yeah, so he's putting the bell time and everything else. He's doing his thing. I, I he's love Alec. Ball. Alec's such a good kid, and he's got you know he's busted his ass because he's a you know he's in great shape, but he's a skinny guy. Yeah, and he's and he, able to he, hang he with anyone. He what? He put oh, yeah. a little bit of muscle. Yep. Yeah. That's and he's doing like I'm I watch Beyond a lot and he's doing some great stuff with Beyond. Oh, we gotta get back to going to Beyond. Well, when we switch to Tuesday nights, we'll be able to. There you go. Oh, you know. start switching to Tuesday nights. Yeah, we're gonna um come in January. We got some stuff going on where we're gonna switch to Tuesdays instead of Thursdays and yeah. Um, we had some we had an opportunity for like better equipment and better sound and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's it's we got and we'll have an opportunity to have some place where like someone like you who you're in the Boston area, like if you can get to Quincy, you could actually come in and sit down in the room with us and do it, you know. Yeah, I could yeah, whatever so, uh, whenever you do that next time, I'm more than happy to go down to Quincy. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. um and we'll you know guys. Don't think just because is when is the benefit? The benefits this weekend? This this Sunday, um, from two to six. Don't hesitate to if you want to donate money, you can go to my Facebook app or my yeah. my my thing. I, I, I was going to say that doesn't mean you have to stop donating at six o'clock on Saturday. Exactly. Yeah, I was going to say too, if people can't donate, even if they send a dollar, send you out a well wish on on social media. That's huge. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'll, I'll be more happy if I had fans, you know, saying all that stuff on my fr- on my friend uh, fan page, my you know, my yeah, social they, media and stuff like that. I will. I'm not an organ donor <laughs> right now, but I will sign up and become an organ donor this week. That's how Just, awesome. because I've never known anyone. It's affected. Yeah, I so, realize it's like. People can some people can be so greedy over people's uh, organs when there's people who are dying who wants to live right. and stuff like that. And uh, I condole to people who donate because it's a that's, lot. Yeah, that's like I said. I've never it's never come into my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it never hit me on how important it really is. And that's it, it is extremely important. It's one of those things that, like, you don't you don't think about stepping in crap until you do. You don't realize what's in front of you when you, until it hits you. You yeah. know. You yeah, know. I know. It hit me like a like a car hit you on know, Route One. Yeah. Man. That's now. What do you see? I mean, so what are your goals? Obviously, you want to come back into wrestling once you get once you're cleared, once you get the donation, and you're all cleared. Do you have goals for your wrestling career still, or is it just right now focused on getting this? And I want to make it. Okay. I don't. I don't care. Where. Yeah, I was I just gonna say. 
there's a lot of opportunity right now with like AEW and yeah. I have to I have to wait. And once the donor the donation comes, I have to wait like six months, eight months to a year for the whole. And that could be, that could be your thing. No, not not your thing. I hate to say it like that, but I mean, you look at like Zach Gowan, like the one leg. I've never known anyone that had a uh, that had a kidney donation that wrestled after. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that could be not your thing because you're a talented wrestler, clearly. But that could be like what gives you that, like the media press. Yeah, you know, gives you. The, I would, that would add it awesome. to your singlet. You add a kidney on there, and people, you know, <laughs> put it on there and let people see what it, generate a conversation over it. You know, that yeah. little extra buzz. I might have to do that. You and see, think something like that will be kicked out because that that will actually probably garner you a younger fan base where there probably are kids dealing with maybe not a kidney but or a liver or a whatever it may be and you're dealing with it. And you as yeah. the wrestler who they watch and look up to, you come in and say, Listen, I went through something similar than you are, and that's gonna get you a fan for life. That's and Bobby D says he likes when you show up because the room lights up with your glowing white tea. <laughs> Appreciate it, brother. That's but and it's like I love when I see you with shows. Like if I see you, you know I'm gonna go right up or dap up and yeah, like the man. last show, the last show we got to sit there and talk the whole time. I signed my first autograph sitting next to you. That was funny. Like, hey, yeah. I'm like you have a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully at the next show I can meet you. Yeah, we yeah, gotta man. get you out. You know, I mean, you gotta get you out to one of Pat's shows. Because the, the the thing with those yeah, is, hopefully. you know, he either runs Southie or Malden. If it's in Malden, that's your backyard. So I usually know if you can, if if you know you're not booked somewhere else, I usually know you'll be at the Malden shows. Yeah. Oh, now. Are you still, have you been going to shows still, or are you trying, is that hard for you to do right now? Like, not it's being able to. It's hard for me to do, and, like, I barely can, like, if I, I can't, like, if I do errands, I'm already out of breath. I'm going to grocery shop and grab, like, a few things, and I'm yeah. already using my energy. So. That's, this is an edge, like, because I never, you know, it's, yeah, I never knew how it affected people, and it's—I I didn't know what caused you. I didn't realize it was hypertension. Like that's—it's it, well, hypertension is one of them, man. That's scary. Yeah, and it, it's, ah. one of, it, it, it's one of those things with hypertension that, like, you think, "Oh, all right, I'm on medication; it's okay," but you don't think of the secondary effects of it. Right. So like many people salt intake and all that fun stuff. Like mm-hmm. I, I watch my salt intake now, which is fine, but. Um, What can you do? Now, do you watch any current wrestling? Do you watch any of the TV stuff? I have. I have. What do you What do you think? Not bad. Not bad at all. Do you still? Did you enjoy WWE? I know it's it's cool to it's like cool to hate on WWE, but at the end of the day, that's the big fish. Yeah, it's like it's like watching the NFL, but people want to watch the XFL. Yeah, I enjoy the NFL's more. Reliable, I, the fan, you know what I mean. I caught the I caught Raw this week and watching um, watching Edge do the promo, and they basically did the Edge and Miz basically did the um, MJF and CM Punk promo, but they did it on a bigger scale. Yeah, you know it was the same idea: go out there and sort of shoot on each other, have fun with it, make fun of each other. And they actually acknowledged AEW in it a few times, which was kind of cool to see because that's WWE does not do that, you know? No, not at all. In AEW, I mean, just watching like a lot of these kids come up that are doing the AEW stuff now, they're all kids you can't, they're all guys you came up with. And that's cool to see, you know, you got to have a little bit of, you got to feel sort of proud of them, even though it's guys, some of them deserved it for a long time. No, I, I'm proud of every one of them. I'm like, I'm happy for them. You know, so once I'm done, it'll be my turn. I that, that, yes, you're, 
You know, I don't. Um, do you know how far away you are from being able to get the donation with having so many? Right donors? now, we done all. I done all the uh, things. I have one procedure done uh, to make sure I'm clear to do surgery. Then we, they have to wait for the donor to do the same thing that I'm doing. Okay. Okay. So, so this fall on Tuesday, I have a procedure done for my heart, which is like a stent. Yeah. I have a claw, like a pair of a artery clogged, so I'm going to fix that. Wow. Okay. We had Bobby D's asking a question. He's saying, do you have to, can you, are you, with your current situation, oh. can you get, to, have you gotten vaccinated? Can you get the three shots or how does that affect I have three shots. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Did you qualify? Did you qualify for the early stages because of the pre existing condition? I got my shot That's, yesterday. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm um, not not to get political. I'm fully vaccinated. I think everybody should. I'm going to say also. I think, hey, I think it's hey, everybody's hey, choice. Though, no, you know what I'll, I mean? say, I'll say it like this and make everything a lot easier. If you can do, if you can drink, you can do drugs. You can take the goddamn well, shot. Yeah, we don't know what's in it. Yeah, you, you don't know what's in that line you just snapped off the bar well, either. Not only that, though, <laughs> I'm sure these people have never read what's on the bottle. What's the ingredients of Motrin? Right. You know, a lot or, of or, or or when they drink or do coke or you know what yeah. I mean. You're like, yeah. But I think it should be their choice. But I don't. I think if you're not vaccinated, then when you go into a close place where you're going to be close up with people, I think Matt's should I mean, be mandated like for yeah, years I mean, to pull the whole freedom I, and all that stuff and all. and, and i think now my thing is you're not vaccinated, you're not vaccinated you just can't travel that's the, it for me like if you know us guys for years it's always you see the sign in front of a restaurant or a fast food place no shirt no shoes no service just add the vaccine right you know no or no matter if you're doing that you so, know I mean, if you're not yeah. vaccinated, just wear a mask if, if yeah. you are if you want to wear a mask, by all means. Uh, if not, cool. Yeah, and that's, yeah, like I said, bad. like, that's your, it's, it's your choice. Like, this is America. I recommend it. And that's all I can do, you know? But at the same time, though, if someone chooses to not wear a mask and they get sick, I'm going to lean towards someone like Brandino to support in, yeah. your, in your fight now than them in their fight. Like if I had ten dollars yeah. to donate, it's going to you as opposed to someone who willingly chose not to take care of themselves. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's and, yeah. and I and I, I had to take anyway because I worked at a school. So yeah. The, oh, and yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not. I already had it. And lucky I was. Mine was just like extremely minor. So I I had it for like ten days. It sucked. Then I went back to work. No. All right, getting back to your wrestling again, I have another question. Now, I have yet to have heard any of your promos cut, but I'd love to hear how you incorporate the liver in it in the future. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to incorporate? I'm going to – Yeah. Um, you know, I beat, I beat liver disease, now I'm going to beat you yeah, or something. You. you know what I'm saying? Basically something asking you uh, basically I, asking you to cut a promo. I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna call myself the comeback Jack Daddy. I mean, like that's why all there is. I, I'm not really a talker when I when I'm on the mic. I'm more of an action person. Um, my actions is my words. But you are the Jack Daddy of all trades. Anything I can, anything you can do, I can do ten times better. That's nice. The Jack Daddy of all trades. That's what it is. All right, JP. Let's hope he doesn't start a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I gotta buy equipment. I might do a st- I might do a stream uh, account for video games. That'd be cool. I'm, yeah, because I'm I'm pretty. I, I go to tourneys. So, oh, All do right. you? Do you play? Yeah, in the tournament game, fighting games. What do you yeah, play? My sons do that stuff. Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, Tekken, okay. Mortal Kombat. The so old are you a Comic Con goer? Yeah, Comic Con, PAX East. Oh yeah. Joe I does used to travel um, with the convention. Yeah. yeah Joe. Used to hate people used to yell out Marco Polo and I'm like, all right, we get it. You know, play it in real life. So why now today? Yeah. I used to travel with the Walker Stalker convention that fell on the owner turned out to be a crook. So that that kind of went to the wayside. But I got connections with a lot of other a lot of other streams of my attendant. 
I've been working as I've worked a few times as a handler with a lot of the voice actors. Like yeah, the guys that, that the guys that did Pinky in the Brain. Uh, oh yeah, 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 I know a lot of yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I work a lot, a lot with that. I've worked uh, different conventions, you know, here and there, mostly local because I can't really travel that much with my health issues. You know, but it, it, I love it's the conventions. It's like you have all your bullshit in the world, and you go there, and you it's see gone. these people who are so in love with what they're wearing and what they're doing that you kind of just forget about your bullshit. And you kind of yeah. you're absorbed into it. And you like you you want you find new fandoms. And I've seen a lot of wrestlers at conventions and that they're bringing in new fans. Like I worked with uh, the Steiner brothers at one a few years ago down in Nashville and they were at the Walker Stalker one and their their take on it was they were sitting there they were next to uh Hacksaw Jim Duggan and they were sitting there talking and three of them had such a rapport with the fans that I know they brought more people in that they, they weren't fans before, but they are now because they they met it. They met what that is. And just yeah. talking to you for, for this last 45 minutes, I can tell you have what it is to bring somebody in, to get somebody all encompassed in what you're saying and hanging on what your, your words that they're going to go. And it's kind of like, you remember the Howard Stern movie? Why do you listen? I want to hear what he's going to say next. And it's kind of like that. I see there's very few wrestlers that have that. And the way you usually cut that little promo, it's it's fluid to you. It's kind of like yeah. you, you tell The Rock, hey, cut a promo. He's going off in 10 minutes like it's like he's breathing. There's very few people that can do that off the cuff. And I, I think you're one of them. I, no, the way- I want you to know me. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna nip that. We'll say we're going to try. We'll say 50-50. Well, this is the asterisk right there for now. You got the asterisk for now. But, yeah. I mean, like, especially because I'm, I'm getting, like, in the future, I would say, like, if I was to cut a promos, I would include some of my health issues. You know, I'm beating this, I'm going to beat you, blah, 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 things like that. I'm sure you're going to work that in, and I think that it's going to be fluid because it's personal. It's yeah, when you, when you come back, I think the pop is going to be huge, especially – so when you come back to like Limitless, let's wrestle, let's wrestle the main stuff. You're gonna get a humongous pop out of that just because you were such a mainstay. Yeah, and I, and I was getting booked in for like New York and stuff like that, and I wanted to do outside of there and see my my you know avenue. Yep. Now um, I forget what I was gonna say, Joe. I was uh, Joe. I'm not used to you talking so much. I know, right? Well, you, I'm finally surprised you <laughs> let me talk. If it wasn't for your glitches, I wouldn't be able to talk. <laughs> now, have you ever ta- – I, I don't think I've ever seen you in a tag match. Have you ever done tag? Tag? Tag team? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who have you tagged up with? And how do you compare – what do you prefer, tag team, or do you prefer being singles? It depends. It really does. Tag and profession type of art. I, I tagged with Eric Johnson up in Maine for Red Lessel. Uh Okay. It's too bad um, D- like if that. DC was still around, you could be the Jack Daddy Cat of all trades. Would be a tag name. I would, but I wouldn't just. I wouldn't. I, I would. Uh, that's why I named myself the Jack Daddy. Then, yeah. DC. Oh, was that was that a part yeah. of that? Really? I didn't know. Yeah. That. Yeah. It was, it was two. It was two factors. One, I'm a huge fan of uh, claymation, so I love that before Christmas. Okay. Like love. Yeah. And. There was a part in Night Before Christmas when I was watching, I was young, there was like, anything's going on, Bone Daddy, but I was talking to Jack uh, Skeleton. I'm like, right. this is his name for Jack Daddy of all trades. So, that's that's a nice DC. tribute to DC, yeah. though, because he was DC was always the daddy cat. Yeah. Yeah, my son still talks about the time DC uh, cut a promo <laughs> on him when he was like eight. And he at first he was like, damn, what was that? He's like, dude, he cut a promo. Kind of promo during the show. It's cool. He was. He, he was. Knows, he knows you. He, he, After the show, he, he had to down, he's, he's like, dude, you okay? You know those yeah. he's, he's like, oh, okay. They signed an autograph, took a picture with them, everything. But and he, DC was one of my son's favorite wrestlers. I was, was the victim of more than one DC promo in the ring. Yeah, but you weren't eight at the time. <laughs> yeah, true, true. But that's yeah, and that um. What effect did he have on your career? I think DC he told me as a he, trainer was one he, of the most underrated trainers in the 
world. He, he made me, told, he told me to be extremely humble and just learn. And it took me a while to figure that out until I got finally plucked on me, like when I started like really learning. And um, what's funny about that is if you didn't know DC, you thought DC was real cocky. But if you knew DC, you realized that DC was actually a very humble guy himself. Yeah. He was. He was. Nice guy. Nice guy, too, especially for what he did to my from, for my son after I, the fact. You know, yeah. he didn't have to do that. He, I, was at, him, I was at Sheldon Goldberg's birthday party when I first started coming around. And this was... Uh, it was like me, Sheldon. It was at Good Times. Like Sheldon just invited me oh, yeah. to go to Good Times. Uh, in in DC, and uh, Eddie Edwards were there. And I'm drinking a beer because it's whatever, you know what I mean? In DC, like uh, he had seen me at a couple of shows, but we weren't really, you know, we didn't know each other well. But the, the second he saw me drinking a beer, it was Eddie, look at this kid. He drinks beers. He doesn't read comics. He's drinking a fucking beer. <laughs> and that point on, like me and DC, he used to get mad at me because I could never, for whatever reason, something always came up and I could never make his Christmas parties. Oh, his Christmas parties. And, like that. I heard. And he used to get mad at me because I could never, I could never show up. I had been in the house. I met Joni and Chachi, but it was never for a Christmas party. It was always like after a show or, you know. Yeah. And that was a fun time after the shows. I also yeah. used to go with him with him, Maddie. Yeah, oh, man, I I love Maddie. I love Maddie and George and yeah. That's I mean, those guys are all they were all a key part in me being a part of wrestling and staying a part of it for as long as I have. You know what I mean? And that's what kept me going by them going doing it for you, right? Brought me back in. That's and it's not like I knew DC had a part of yours. You know what I mean? I knew he had a part of you and uh, Joey and that whole sort of class and the at Bell Time. That people didn't re- like people that didn't go to Bell Time didn't realize how much he had to do with you guys all learning like that. Yeah, exactly. and that was that was huge. And like I said, like he loved every one of you guys, and he's he was proud of every one of you guys. So now, so you got you got to do these tests. You Joe, you did your test, and you got the you know the other stuff coming up. And then out of the hundred people, they get to do the test. And then is it like right after that you would be able to get the donation? Possibly they'll give us a day. It'll be like on a Monday. that I'll be in surgery, and I'll leave on Friday to make sure I'll be bed rested for six weeks. I'll tell you what. I'll do it a step further. If I will sign up to be a donor, uh, like a you know a regular donor on my license. If you're not able to find a match, I will go in and I'll put my name on that list for you as well. Yeah, that list is hard to get. Unfortunately, you have a uh, you have hypertension. We'll get, okay. What you okay. would do is get tested, and they put you on the registry. Is that and okay? From there, they'll match you with other people yeah. who might match you. So just just do the license thing, and they'll be highly pleased. Okay. Yep. I will absolutely do that, and I I will encourage everybody listening to do the same. And like I said, if you can donate something to the um, to the cause, it is greatly I appreciate it. I know Brandon, you appreciate it. I appreciate and, every penny, uh, everything, even the great, even the text messages. I know it's overwhelming. Yeah. I don't respond back. It's just I'm overwhelmed. Well, with yeah, so much positivity, and I just want to thank everyone who's done that. And I'm I'm just lost for words. No, when I saw the time, like when I saw you had the benefit coming up and running the times, so that's an old school salty thing where me and Joe grew up is you know, somebody's sick, somebody's got this, or somebody, somebody needs a, money for whatever. Yeah. You ran a time, which is what you, that's what we call the benefit was a time. Yeah. So like when I saw you doing that, I was like, All right, we gotta get you on the show. We reach Death Wish is sending you a package. We have no idea what's in it. Okay. Yeah. I can tell you there'll death be a coffee. There'll be some damn good coffee because it is—it's the world's strongest coffee. Okay. Uh 
Uh, it's the world's most caffeinated coffee. I think that's what they say, right, Joe? Yep. I think they yeah, I think it's probably, it's probably tomorrow or something like that because you sent it to my address, correct? Yes. Yeah, I had him send it to your address. So hopefully it went out today or tomorrow. It'll, it'll No, it'll probably get there. When did I send that? Monday? Tuesday? I think yesterday. Uh, uh, Monday I asked. Tuesday I got the address and gave it to him. Yeah. So hopefully it's there by – it's only coming from off the No way is that. Yeah. So. If you don't get it on time, what I'd say is run a 50-50 on Facebook. Run not a 50-50, but run a, you know, run it on Facebook or whatever. You know what but I it say? should be there on time. This is what I say. If it's not there on time, it's done. Keep it for yourself. Enjoy the coffee and your recovery. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's... Enjoy it for yourself. But uh, death wishes sure Jeff someone won't, who... I'm sure Jeff won't mind. Jeff Ayers, he's been on the show a few times. He's a friend of mine that I met through the convention world. He's a, uh, well, he's a tell him thank you so much for donating his uh, his product to a yeah. great cause. I yes. absolutely will. And I, um, anybody listening or any chat room, they all know that the our code is still good on Death Wish. If yeah. you order from their website, you use, was it, Irish Whip? I think it's just TIW. TIW and or try both one will work, and you'll get, I think it's 10% off your order. Yes. You so. know, so it's out there. If anybody wants to do it, they did that for us. So I have no problem putting them out there every right. time. Yeah. You know? No, they were good to us. They, they for a while, like anyone who came on the show was getting a basket, but we had to stop that because. Yeah, you, you don't want to shit where you eat, you know? Barry Horowitz <laughs> loved it, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Barry Horowitz was. Barry Horowitz was my best friend for like a month because he got a package from them. I've seen him posting pictures with it wearing a t-shirt. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. he was at the conventions and whatever he's doing signings. To guess what what will be in the basket as of seeing other ones, it'll probably be a, a couple pounds of uh, coffee. Uh, it'll probably be a mug. They have some pretty badass mugs. Uh, it'll probably be. A, hmm? I said, "You want me with the mugs?" <laughs> they, well, they yeah, have they really have good hawk hole thermoses, like that. Yeah. Literally, are every bit as good as a Yeti. I've tested it. All right. Yeah, I might have. I might have two of them. If, when I see, I'll give you one. I appreciate it, brother. I really do. And, uh, yeah. So there's probably. I, I wouldn't even put it past. I'm putting a hoodie in there too. Oh. All right. So. Yeah. So there's all. There's, they're good. And then they'll probably be like the little trinkets, like rubber the rubber bracelets. If they, have a, if they have a gift card, or if you can send me like the information, I will do a, I'll, a appreciation thing. You got yeah, to I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with Jeff on see if I can get him on Facebook. You should okay. hit up. You should hit up every bar and restaurant that you've ever worked for when you were doing yeah, the bar when you were doing the bar work as far as getting um getting gift cards and stuff because they'll yep. most of them will give something. Yep. Yeah, I'm right, but uh, apparently we have so many raffles. Apparently we have is like that right. Well, that's when you combine them. If you get close to fifty, is that right? That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. And then, that's but really then like, that's when you would combine them. If you get gift cards to restaurants, you have a put them all together. You know, that things like that. That's yeah. Putting them what, are, what are some of the raffles that'll be at the ben- at the benefit? Uh, like Red Sox, Celtics tickets. Um, scratch tickets, you name it. Yeah, and the raffles would be what, like five bucks each or something. Yeah, five bucks each, um, fifty fifty, and a fifty fifty raffle to boot with. Now, where is the benefit? It's in uh, fifteen Colburn Street, Lynn, Mass. It's um, right around the corner from this place called Pizza Lovers. If you go in there, you go too far. It's a small. Um, like a like a post, and it was okay. the first post for African Americans around the land. But it's for everyone. Okay, we, me and Joe would be welcomed. Yeah, that's I'm Joe. Like have you seen wrestling communities? We're, we're <laughs> I we're was like joking. I was. Like I was we're I was, like the toys of misfits and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. No, no. Pro wrestling is definitely the land of misfits toys. Yeah, I try to tell my mom that I'm like, you're gonna see some people. Man, but you know what? Some of those people are some of the best people in the world. Exactly. And you'll be but able to nobody tell gives them a chance. Like I know Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy is someone who, when you made the announcement, like I think he posted it every 20 minutes. He's the first person. Him, and, Bo, um, 
was extremely helpful. Jason and everyone else has been there for me. Mike is somebody who Mike is somebody who, if people didn't know him, they'd cross the street when they saw him coming. But literally, like one of the greatest people out there. He goes yeah. and, and he needs to come back to pro wrestling. Yeah. But Him and Brandino he has, Davis. He has a beautiful daughter. Yes. Yes. So congratulations, Mike. Yeah, I'm happy. happy for that. And it's, you're gonna be able to tell the people at, the, at that are out to benefit who are in the business because if they're truly in the business, they're gonna make sure that they say hi to your mother. Oh yeah, there's you a few about my mother. I was I was thinking as a as a little comedy joke. I was like, I might get hot dogs and just be out there and just like pass them out and give them handshakes. But I'm like, nah. That's kind of- <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that would be funny. That could work, actually. It that could. But I'm like, that's so many hot dogs. <laughs> well, no. Then, then that's when you well, kick into that's when you kick into the heel, and you only give them to no. people that you like. When yeah. you see, like, you know, yeah, you're cute. Here you go. Here's a hot dog. When the yeah. lower you when know? the lower car guys start showing up, you just tell them, "Sorry, the door was light." Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And then like make sure they're all beef hot dogs because then you get a typical here. Here, yeah, here's my beef hot dog for you. But that, <laughs> that way, if you did a hot dog and a handshake to the people who came in, that would pop a lot of them. Oh yeah, I mean that, that's, well, the, that's the hot dog pyramid. That's the that's the one thing I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's one thing that sort of changed in pro wrestling over the past. 15 years is the hot dog and the handshake has kind of gone away and people are actually yeah to at least get gas money you know what i mean yeah you get gas money now i mean i, I had a couple of times with hot dogs and handshakes i'm like eh, yeah, whatever. Oh. that's when you sell merch exactly now do you still have merch for sale i know you had the I, Jack, I, Jack daddy of I, all do. I just there's just randomized with pictures and stuff like that if you want me to send you one i'm more than happy to send you now, where because that's another way people can support you. So, it, if someone um, doesn't want to just donate can, a dollar can, and they want to send you a ten bucks, I can mail it to them. Okay, so I'm Facebook, Facebook pay. Tell me what size if I have it left. If cool. not, yeah. That's, but listen, um, guys, I gotta just take my medication because I know right. what it starts. All right. Yeah, that's we're the just, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be cautious with your medication. Man. Yes, yeah, Brandon. Absolutely. We're at just about an hour, man. Do you want to just, before we let you go, take your medication again? Because I'm sure you probably do. Tell yeah. us where people can, one, get tickets, uh, two, um, find for the, you. For the raffle or for the fundraiser? Everything. Uh, the fundraiser is more than just to come in. Uh, you can donate at the door if you want to. It's at 15 Colburn Street in Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, this, the fundraiser is at 2 to 6. And there'll be football, so there'll be one floor for, like, you know, sitting down and having, like, sandwiches and knickknacks and stuff like that. And if you want to watch the game, there's a bar, so you guys can have your drinks and stuff like that. I'll probably have cranberry. Maybe you might have one beer. I really cut down drinking. Uh, Do tonic water and, and cranberry. Yeah, and I've, been doing, like have, I've been doing I've been doing that. That, that and, uh, and all that stuff. Hold on a second. Sorry. Um, but yeah, um, my Instagram is jackdaddy73 at instagram.com. You can look at my Facebook, I'm Brandino Davis. Uh, you can shoot me a message on, on Instagram if you have someone to talk to about the situation. You know, someone that has a situation, I'm willing to ask you. You can ask me anything, stuff like that. If you want to play me in Call of Duty? It's all pro Black King 7 or. Just to just to shoot the oh. shit with me and have fun. What I'll say to you, Brandon, like because I know I'm big on mental health. If you ever need someone to talk to, I don't know shit about you know what you're going through, but if you ever just need someone to talk to and to listen, you can always just hit me up, man. And I remember JP sentiments. Thank you. So, I appreciate both of you. That's something that we've both sort of struggled with, and that's something that we both take pretty seriously. So, yeah, because yeah. it's 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 that I'm only assuming that that does a number on you. It does, and, but you have to learn. It's just, I, it's yeah, just you, you've always since I've met you, you've always had that like happy go lucky attitude, and I love that about you. You, man. you got it, man. I've been I've I, been a lot, and when once you see it, you're like, all right, I'm good. I, 
I enjoy talking to Brandon, but I can't wait for the Brandino Davis return. He'll be back. The Jack Daddy will be back. I will be in house. That's, All right, but Brandon, you have a great night, man. Um, I I will say this: you won't need luck with the benefit, but I just hope you make every dime you need. Thank you guys so much, and thank you for um, let me um, have my outlet out here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Anytime, that's always open. And let me throw this out there to you. I'm I'm retired. If you need rides, hit me up. I just sent you a friend request on Facebook. We'll go send, through that. Send, send, send to me. Yeah. If you need right. rides, need whatever. We'll send you Uber Eats and shit. Whatever you need to help you get through it. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. I really do. All right, you guys. You guys have a blessed night. And the fans, thank you so much for supporting me. And Thanks. all my travels and my, uh, my path I have to deal with right now. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. And I want to have you on and just talk happy shit, though, too. So well, we'll, yeah. have, we'll have you on again after. Yes. That works out perfectly. Yeah, maybe maybe before or right this. after you return. Perfect. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Brandon. All right. All right. You Thank have you, a great Brandon. night. All the best to you Thank and your family. Man. Bless you guys. Thanks. You as well. Guys, All I right. can't tell you how important this is. Like, Honestly, like if you don't have the money, I know it's the holiday season. I know money is tight. Do not make yourself go broke for this. But if you have a dollar, mm-hmm. please consider it. And um, Brandon is, you just saw him. So whether you knew Brandon or not before, Brandon is a great guy. I don't go, I don't put, Joe will tell you, I don't put myself on the line for assholes and shit bags anymore. I mean, he likes me, but I'm the exception. I've, yeah, but I've known you forever. So yeah. I said anymore. Well, and, now, and, and like I said, if people can't afford the, even the dollar, shoot him a message on Facebook. Yeah. Send yeah. him something on Instagram. Hey, send him a flower, uh, uh, you know, a picture of a flower saying, hey, yeah. hope you feel better. Right. You or know? a funny meme, something, yeah. you know? Um, because it's, it's just so important, and people's health is so important. Um, like I, I deal with the mental health issues that are probably kicked kicked into overdrive due to my past health issues. So I understand that what he with what he mentally might have gone through after hearing the diagnosis, and what he's going through, and what he will eventually go through. And I yeah, understand. And if you I see Brandon, it. if you're in the New England area. Or if you're at a show in, you know, like he said, North Carolina, or he's done stuff in Canada. If you have, but right now I know he's going to a handful of shows here and there to see people. If you happen to see him at a show, walk up and say hello to him. Like I can tell you that when I was sitting with him at the UFO show, he honestly appreciated every person that came up and recognized him. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, but, so I got a question for you now, JP, revolving around our, our move to a studio. Yeah. And I know we have to we'll probably have to clean it up a little bit, but will I still be able to use my catchphrase of see you next Tuesday? Yes. Yes. I think that'll fly under the books. Here's the thing, guys. And Joe just said it. Like we are moving into a professional radio studio. We won't be well. Technically, we won't be on the radio. We'll be on a radio station, a local radio station's website. Um, but we will still be a podcast. We do have to. Uh, we have to give them a clean version, and then whatever we say will still go out. The live show will still be the same. A lot won't change here um, at all. Um, and we can try to clean it up anyway. It's not that we're vulgar and all that. Our child, we right. usually drop an f bomb or something here or there. But we can try to, you know, turn that in. I know Bobby D probably likes it. I'll have a beep. I'll have a. We'll be on a little bit of a delay, and I'll have a. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. I believe I'll have a button. I'll have so, to go on a tirade at least once, just so you keep beep 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 beep. I'll just beep out everything you say anyway. The whole show. That's. I'll pick a word that you say regularly, and I'll just beep that word all show, so people don't know what it is. That'll work. And actually, hey, we just cut, we just thought of a contest right there. What's the word Joe tried to say? <laughs> but know? yeah, that's. But guys, we've run over an hour at this point. Um, please consider Brandon. Um, I think I, I'm going to talk to you, Joe. One of my cousins is working with a veterans charity in the Northwest. Um, like a, it's a hiking thing that they do. I'll, I'll get yep. more into that. Like an outward bound type of thing. Yes. As they're, um, they get a website coming up and we will be talking about that. And, um, 
because that's something like you're a veteran. That's something that's um, near and dear to my heart. Josh is a veteran. I'm not, but like that's something that we all hold. Well, it's one of those things. If you if you're not a veteran, be a veteran supporter. That's oh, do, dude. Do you know what happened today? What? So I have I have a cousin that married into a uh, a pretty. He he married into the Rockefellers. Lucky okay, man. like he's yeah his his well no I mean his wife works like she's not rich but she is literally one of the Rockefeller granddaughters. They right. just they just bought an inn in Vermont. Him and his wife. Yeah. Do you know what they named it or what they're naming it? Maine Inn or Vermont Inn? The Griff Inn. So it's play up your last name. Yes. That's freaking awesome. How cool is that? And it's well, a small oh, little it's a small place, like six or seven rooms, but still it's the Griff Inn. You no, know, I, I have an idea swirling around my head. We gotta go on location and, sh- um, and I would go from there. We could probably do it on the off season with them. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Vermont it's, is it is it skiing? Is it foliage? Is it the it's, summer so it, it's all of it. It's um what's the big what's the big mountain down there? Uh, um Appalachian Mountains. No, it, it, like one of the big ski mountains. It's only like five minutes from, but it's also in the middle of the mountain. It's well, in the middle of all the me- foliage. You've seen me walk. Do you think I can ski? But their wedding. So at their wedding, I got to do something that I never, ever planned on doing in my life. So it wasn't even a bucket list thing, but it's just something pretty damn cool. In my full suit, at their wedding, I jumped into a Rockefeller pool. <laughs> Was the they water got... different? No, Did well, so... Champagne? It was, they got married in October um, in in Vermont on one of the Rockefeller farms. I remember you telling me and, about that back in the day. And you could see the steam coming off the pool. So him and his wife jumped in and his nephew, my, my cousin's kid, got like nervous. He was young at the time. And I said, oh, come on, Will. I'll jump in with you. Let's go, me and you. And he was like, no, no. And. My other cousin, who's right behind, who was right behind me and was older than me, said, "I'll do it with you, JP. Come on." So I was like, "Fuck!" I had no intention of jumping in the pool, <laughs> but now I'm being called out by somebody to do well, it. So you I was like, "All right." Out the and somebody picks so it up. I go to jump in. I take you know, take my shoes off, take my socks off, take my jacket off, and my tie. So I'm just in my, I'm in my shirt, my dress shirt, my pants. I can hear my my cousin Dave's wife yelling at him, Dave, put your pants back on. He's in the middle of the wedding stripping. He's ready to jump in in his boxes. Oh, boy. We were all, it was open bar. I'll say that. Uh, Yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised more people (laughs) just not jump in or or say they jumped in, but really fell in. Dave Dave wound up finding his soaking wet shirt in the hotel parking lot the next morning. That's amazing. He didn't even know he lost it. <laughs> but that, that's something I can say I did. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like I can say I was out drinking but, like key and woke up in L.A. So congratulations to Brady and Elsa. I'm proud of you guys. I know. I, I don't know if this was something you guys ever dreamt about, but I know this is like a dream come true for anybody to be able to open up a business like that. And uh, it, it, I love it, the name. Is it an inn or more of a bed and breakfast type it's, place? So they're going to make it into a bed and breakfast. Oh, okay. Basically. They're going to treat it like a bed and breakfast. But it's definitely an inn. Like it's, but I love that the name is perfect. We're going to have them host a summertime wrestling show. I, uh, we call it a beaten breakfast. I texted them and I was like, congratulations. I said, the second I heard, I said, oh, they got to call it the Griffin. And my father rolled his eyes and said, that's what they're fucking calling it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. How do you not? How do you not go with the pun? Oh yeah, you well, know it's the like ultimate. Me. That's like me. If I was going to become a doctor, I'd be orthopedics and specialize in knees. That's <laughs> you know, but I'm not a doctor. I see a lot of them, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> you too. But yeah, so uh, congratulations to Brady and Elsa, and I'm sure I, I would love to. Like I, I didn't think Vermont would be like my thing, and I, it was so cool to. Where we stayed for their wedding was like, you walked across the street and it was uh, Rentham, like the outlets. Okay. They had their version of that was right there. 
So there was like things to do other than look at foliage, but the foliage was amazing. You were only thinking about the open bar. What was cool, what they did was, uh, so the wedding, because it was a, you know, it was a destination type of thing. It was multiple nights. And the first night was all, um, uh, the first night was all Boston based beers. And okay. the, the second night was all Vermont based beers, which both oh. are pretty well known for their beers. Yeah. But the second night I was drinking all maple, uh, maple martinis. Okay. I haven't drank in 26 years. So picture a martini, picture of maple syrup flavored vodka, basically. Yeah, I could find that. That was pretty cool. I was more of a whiskey guy myself back in the day. I like whiskey. I, I don't do a lot of vodka. I just started with vodka again, but the martinis yeah. were good. I couldn't pass it up. It was like a signature thing. You know what I mean? I used to do the old fashioned beer in a ball, you know, the high yep. ball and have a beer and just one and one. But all right, we're getting long. I got to edit this. All um, right. And- Bobby D saying he likes rum and coke. Rum and coke all day, man. Oh, all yeah. All day. Now, uh, well, with that, I'm going to say for now, it will change in the future, but see you next Thursday. That's.